Hello boys and girls, welcome back to your lesson number two and today we're gonna describe a bit the objects that you see here on the screen, yeah? The question is, can you guess what the objects are and which jobs used to use them? Used to means I had the habit to use them, okay? Do you know what is this? Hmm, yeah? It's easy, huh? Maybe it's quite, kind of old-fashioned, but it's still easy to find out. It's a hair dryer. Okay, what about number two? I'm not sure if you have ever seen this object in your life. They used to play music with it. It was a record player. Mm -hmm. And this, can you guess? Okay, it's very different from the modern smartphone, right? But it was the first kind of mobile phone that existed. And this one in number four. Okay, it's a microscope. Okay, so who used to use this object? It was a hairdresser. Mm -hmm. And number two. Okay, we could say a DJ of the old times. Number three, the first ones to have mobile phone in the history were businessmen. Yeah, because they were going up and down, and they need to be needed to be available. And number four, uh, scientist. Okay, very good. Now we're gonna listen to this radio show, and you will complete on your notebook, right, the information about these different objects we talked about. Take your notebooks and something to write and let's start the listening, please. Two, listen to the radio show. Check your answers to activity one. Welcome to the What Is It quiz. The quiz where children have to decide what an old fashioned object from the past was and who used it. Let's welcome today's guests. Hi, I'm Marcus. And I'm Su Jin. OK, so here's the first object. Marcus, you're first. Well, um, that looks like it's part of a car. Or maybe it's part of a plane. What's your guess? I think it's part of a car. I think taxi drivers might use it. Su Jin? Your turn. Well, I think I know what it is. I think it might be an old hairdryer. That's what it looks like. So, I think it was used by hairdressers. Am I right? Yes, that's right. Well done, Su Jin. Ten points. This is a hairdryer made from plastic around the 1970s. Let's take a look at our next object. Sujin. Ooh, that's a strange looking thing. I think it was used to make sweets. No, it can't be a sweet maker. It's too small. I've changed my mind. It must be for checking your eyes. And what do you think, Marcus? Oh, wow. I think it could be something that scientists use. Maybe for mixing different things together. Well, those were both great guesses, but sorry, neither of you get the points. This is a record player. It's from the 1950s. It was used by DJs and musicians to play music. Let's take a look at our next object. Sujin. Oh, I've no idea. Perhaps cleaners may use this? Maybe they'd clean dishes with it. That can't be right, though. I don't know at all. I know this one. I think it must be an old mobile phone. It looks like one I saw at a museum. Businessmen and politicians used them in the 1980s, didn't they? Well done, Marcus. That's right. Ten points. So, after three objects, Marcus has ten points and Su Jin has 
ten points too. So we need to look at one more item to decide today's winner. Here it is, Marcus. You're first. Okay, I think I know this. I think it's something that's used by architects. They might use it to see how tall buildings are. That's my guess. Sujin. I think scientists might use this to look at really small things. So, it's a what's it called? A microscope. Sujin, that's right. It's a microscope from the eighteen eighties. Ten points for Sujin, and congratulations! You're the winner. Here's your prize. How do you feel? Brilliant, just brilliant. Thank you, and thank you, Marcus. I hope you enjoyed the game. Yes, it was great. See you next time, everyone. <laughs> okay, boys and girls. Now you completed your activity, and let's read this fact on the left. Okay, there are a lot of unusual jobs. Have you ever wondered what happens to the golf balls that fall into lakes? Okay, so golf ball divers are paid to swim down and find them. All right, so there's a person who is responsible to fish all the golf balls inside the lake. Yeah, what an unusual job. Let's continue. And today we will talk about a new grammar topic. I will attach next to this video uh, an explanation in more detail about models of probability and deduction. Okay, but we will explain it very briefly here and we will complete the activity below. So, Looking at these sentences, it must be an old mobile phone. It looks like one I saw at a museum. This uh, it must be, it's a must obligation like we practiced in the past. No, it's more like a deduction. Yeah, it must be, I think, all right. Um, what about this? Perhaps cleaners may use this, may, all right. We talked about this May, about probability. We, we did it in the past, if you remember, but this is a revision. I think it might be an old hair dryer. Yeah, it might be the deduction. I'm not sure. It could be something that scientists used, also another type of deduction. It can't be a sweet maker. It's too small in negative as well, but deduction. All right, these kind of expressions are very useful when you try to describe uh, pictures in the Cambridge exam. Remember, we've been doing this exercise in class, talking about pictures and saying things that they could be, they might be, it must be, okay? So it helps you to express the meaning of the picture or what is happening in it. Right? So let's choose what would be the best option. Read the full sentence before you decide. We use must or can't when we think something is true. We usually have a good reason to think this. It's must or can't. Must. Very good. Okay? So you're pretty sure about your um, idea. What do we use? May, might or could, or must. So these three go together, may, might, or could, or must, when we think something is possible, but we are unsure. Okay, this time we are not sure, so we use may, might, or could. Very good. We use can't or must, when we are sure something isn't true. When it's negative, isn't, can't. Very good. So, knowing these different expressions, can you please complete the sentences for your picture? Okay, you can write these in your notebook. Okay, like the man must be a... And you complete. What is his job? Right? The weather is sunny, so it must... 
etc. The same for the other sentences on the right based on the picture below. All right, very good. Now, um, we won't do this uh, exercise here, but I encourage you to write five lines on your notebook about your dream job and describe it. Okay, it, a dream job means something that you would love to do when you grow up. There, is, there are no limits of uh, having a degree or having certain specific ability. Okay, what would be a dream job? Maybe it's something invented that it doesn't exist, but I want you to describe it. Okay, okay, and finally, um, you can do this uh, reading. Okay, and then complete the sentences with the words in bold. Okay, can we read together? Jobs, what are they really like? I've been working full time as the manager of this sweet shop for the last four years. Before I work here, I spent a month unemployed and looking for a job. So I was delighted to start here. At first, I was excited about eating a lot of sweets, but about six months ago, I started a game with a colleague to see who can avoid eating sweets for the longest. So I haven't eaten any sweets since then. All right, the one I'm speaking is I love sweets, so I'd love to work in a sweet shop. Do you see, this is an example of what I want you to do in the previous writing exercise I mentioned before. Here we have full time, it means all the time, yeah, eight hours a day, unemployed, not having a job, and colleague is a person who works with you. Let's read number two. I work as a computer programmer for a company that makes games for smartphones. I work in a team of four people and we program a part of, a part of the game. The salary is great, so I can buy the latest gadgets. The name of the game that I've been working on for the last few months is a secret, but I can tell you that there'll be a pirate boat racing in it. And this girl, uh, who is 10, she would love to be a programmer and make computer games. So that would be her dream job. My job is to dress up in a dinosaur costume. I go to children's parties and sing, dance and play games. I only work part-time, usually on a Saturday morning once a month, so I don't earn much money. That's okay though, because I've been studying hard recently as it's my last year of university. In the future, I want to quit my job as a dinosaur and have a career as a scientist. So I want, when I grow up, I want to be a dinosaur. Right? But the future um, job would be a scientist. Let's look at part-time. Yeah? Instead of uh, eight hours a day, yeah? just a few hours every day or during the week. Earn money is obtain money doing a job. And quit is a stop. Right? Don't do that activity anymore. The last one. I've been working as an architect for 35 years. And I've been the boss of the company for five years too. I've designed a water park and a playground during my career. I'm going to retire next year and move to the seaside. I'm excited about it, and, but I'm going to miss my colleagues. There are only five staff at my company, so we are like a family. I'd like to design an underwater hotel. What an adventure. All right, so boss is the, the, the person who is responsible for a company. Career is your job, career, not university, okay? It's the different jobs you've done or the different experience you have in your job. Retired when you stop working, when you are older. And the staff is all the people working in a company. Okay, so taking these words in bold, now please... Uh, Pause the video and complete these sentences in your notebook. I'll give you the answer of all these exercises in the next lesson video, okay? All right, thank you very much. Have fun.